Hello, it's Scott here from Digital Puppets and in this video I'm going to walk you through how we develop um, and produce one of our shows using Digital Puppets. Um, this isn't going to be a snazzy produced video, I'm literally just going, I'm just setting screen record to go and I'm just going to walk through and I'm going to go over literally how we start off a project, how we build a digital puppet and then once we have those puppets how we animate them and put them together to produce a show. Right now the show we're going to use as an example is one that we've been working on since January this year, this year being 2020 um, in case you're watching this further down the line um, and yeah the show is called The Kickabout which is a podcast for Johnny Vaughan, who is a UK um, television and radio presenter. Um, the Kickabout is a podcast for his radio show um, on Global Radio X. In fact, I'll just get the channel up. If you, the videos are made exclusively for the Facebook um, pages, and you can find it by going to Radio X. And when you go to Radio X, um, you can find the series and you can see right here is the kickabout with Johnny Vaughan and also his co-presenter Gavin Woods and to date we have done 35 videos well 34 videos released um, we just finished the 35th one this weekend and basically what happens is they record their podcast we get the audio delivered to us on a Friday night we usually lip sync on the Friday evening so that on the Saturday morning we can get straight into it and we get it made all in that one day we get it um, animated and then we get sent back to them as you know there's two of us here primarily at Digital Puppets myself and my brother Anthony Evans we take it in turns so that we're not both missing a Saturday each week so one Saturday I'll do it one Saturday Anthony will do it and also we'll rotate on a Friday I'll do the um, lip syncing audio clean up and then the next Friday Anthony does it. Right, so how does a project get started with Digital Puppet? Well, the first thing we do when we start any project is we try and find out what the show is about. We ask the potential customers if there's any particular um, style they like because um, we're very adapted. We can come up with something completely unique or we could come up with something um, you know, a customer could say to us, I very much like the manga style. Um, and we can work to something inspired by that. Um, or if a customer comes to us and say, we've already got a character, um, can you turn that into a digital puppet? We can also do that. So, as you can see here, for Radio X, right back, this might have been actually Christmas last year, I can't remember now, it's um, quite a while ago. But when we first started the project, um, they said I was interested in turning this Radio X podcast into an animated show um, similar to what they did with the Ricky Gervais show um, which was also a podcast and then they turned those audio recordings into a cartoon. Um, they, so first thing, they did have some um, initial concepts I believe and off of those um, I did a bunch of sketches and this was the one they settled on. Um, and then, so the very first thing we're going to do is get the characters um, vectorized. And I use Adobe Animate to do that. I know other people, my um, brother included, would probably make everything illustrated in Adobe Illustrator. I've been a long time user of, well, it was Flash, obviously, when all them years ago when I first started using it. And I just like the drawing. Um, you know, this is a program I use to do all my drawings. So once a customer has a sketch that they're happy with, what we're going to do next is we're going to get it um, vectorized. We'll, um, I'll bring it into Adobe Animate, formerly Flash. Um, I will get it all digitalized. I'll send it over to the customer, make sure they're happy with it. And then once they are, I'll start um, breaking it down into layers. Well, I say I'll start breaking it down into layers. I would have already done that um, as I started digitalizing the image and everything so you'll have the eyes the nose uh, the mouth layers ears 
everything completely separate as you can see here um i'll go into a few things here to give you a demonstration of how i put some of these rig some of these things together because as you might know we don't just do single frame elements so for example a lot of digital puppets are made with just a single frame for the at it or the vitamins it'll just be a single frame for each of the mouth shapes but i like to animate each of the mouth shapes to give it a more fluid look so let's have a look at um johnny's mouth here so watch this this is going to be is a mouth and as you can see here i've done lots and lots and lots of different mouths so we've got all the vitamins and then i've got a bunch of expressions as well puzzled small green happy i try and do all the different expressions um so that when the characters are functioning they're very emotive and you know just feel more alive so let's have a look at how this mouth is rigged so first of all it is a um object layer and um so object it's a symbol and i specifically make sure it's a graphic and you'll understand why in a minute um so let's just go into it right you can see here i've got the jaw i've got the side of the mouth um top lip um lower lip and then i got the inside of the mouth so that's the um i've got a bit of shadow for the teeth um, upper teeth tip here the upper teeth really shouldn't ever move if you think about you know your head your bop um your bottom jaw you know flaps about and so your teeth follow um but your top teeth are locked into place so you shouldn't really have them teeth you know moving all over the place so really once the teeth are made at the top they stay in place the lower teeth however are animated to move with the jaw um tongue obviously i've got this one for the a mouth here i've got this as a classic tween so it's a symbol but on other frames I might have that as um, a graphic so that I can move it around. Um, for example, the owl mouth. Um, so when it goes L, you want the tongue to animate up and press against the top teeth. So, and then for the inside of the mouth, I mask it off. So that's what it looks like. Oop. And you can see the red there is where so anything outside of the mask area is not going to show as i'm sure you already know and to create a mask you just create a top level you right click um clickers mask drag anything layer that you want to be um under that mask control like that drag it into it and then you can do that for multiple layers and then anything you've um colour there once you lock all them layers you'll see and this is just so like i say i like a bit more fluidity now another big tip is obviously in adobe character animator um when you're talking you're saying lots of vitamins very quickly. So, you know, it's not going to be like, ah, uh, the, re. It's going to be more like, ah, uh, it, the, re. So, you're going to want to, as you'll see here, when I animate my mouths, I, um, I always had a tween and I make sure. My tip would be to ease out. And I normally pick um, cubic or, you know, so basically you want it to jump um, quickly into the mouth shape. Because if it takes ages to get into something that is recognizably the mouth shape you're going for, 
like an app. You don't want this to slowly ease out because what will happen when you go into Character Animator and it is automatically lip syncing or lip syncing to you live, um, all you're ever going to see is that mouth just slightly open. Basically, what I like to do is have the mouth jump into the mouth shape pretty quickly and then have just a bit more action so you can see that, you know, bit of movement and it makes your animation look a bit more, you know, advanced, complex. Um, anything that I talk about in this video, if you feel I haven't been clear or I don't go into enough information and you want to know more, just drop a comment below and I'll be happy to fill in any blanks that I missed out. Like I said, this video is literally just me going through and talking through how I make it. It's not particularly, I haven't got a script in front of me. I haven't got a grand plan of all the different things I'm going, I'll, I'll put something together. I'm literally just going to make this video and hopefully some of the things I'll show you might be helpful. So yeah, um, big tip here, if you're making a mouth shape, um, even if you're, like with me, as you can see, I've got lots of different layers. Um, some people might do it frame by frame, you know, just draw each frame. But I would recommend that you jump straight into the mouth shape. You know, don't ease into it. You want to, you know, ease out. So you want it to go straight into the recognizable mouth shape pretty quickly and then just add a bit more movement. Um, a few more bits and bobs. If you do like, if you would like to make it like I do, as you can see, I've got um, the top lip. Um, sometimes you've got to break these up into layers, but often, as you can see, this is a shape tween, and so I draw, I draw the first one, I draw the last shape, and then it automatically tweens um, between those two frames. And the first frame for the top lip and the bottom lip will be exactly the same, and then they'll both go out. But sometimes it isn't. You know the transaction doesn't work too smooth and you do have to resort to frame by frame as i have clearly done in this one so for the bottom lip i think i ended up just drawing them in frame by frame just so it looked smoother i think it was it didn't naturally you know take the shape that i wanted it to and i think that's because in this particular instance i got a bit of an unusual you know side mouth shape going on so it didn't naturally follow the path that I wanted it to. But if you've got a more basic um, shape mouth, like a lot of mouths are just a kind of like half circle and stuff like that, you should be able to shape tween from the start to the end without any issues. And, you know, again, um, tongue, inside mouth, lower teeth. And let's have a look at a few more mouths before I move on. Um, let's go for one of the expressions so do, 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 do. Well, let's go for mad you'll see there's no um, inside mask on this one because the mouth is an opening um, right um, now before I um, went into the mouth I did say it's important to create a symbol and to create a graphic symbol, not a movie symbol. And the reason is, is that when you do a graphic symbol, you can um, select replay or play once. And then when you scroll along, you will see it animate. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other frames I've animated as well. And then what happens then, um, is that you turn off all the other frames. In fact, I'll come back to that in a second because that's the last point about how I export my layers and then get onto the next day. So quickly before I show you that, I'm just going to show you one of the pupils. So let's see. Um, let's find a blink. Do, 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 do. Here we go, blink. Again, same setup as a mouth. It's a symbol. It's a graphic. Double click on it and now a tip for doing a blink. I think this is a good tip, which um, somebody at Disney passed on to me 
not um a while ago when i was working on a project there um is you want to a blink should happen quickly obviously um but sometimes i see blinks that people do and even if it's five frames it might be like you know the top frame then it's a quarter closed then it's a half bit closed and then it finally closes what you really need to do is jump to a half close and then a full close and then just a bit of movement and then you get a much more nicer like i say blinks are very fast if you make a blink too slow it's going to look off and then when it comes to um, eyelids i like to create a combination of um narrow slightly narrow Oops, let's close all these so yeah first um after the blink the next eyelid that i normally make is a general small happy eyelid so that will be the lower eyelid raised then i might do a narrow so that's there you go and then generally if a character is unimpressed or annoyed it might just be the upper eyelid but then you know you can combine these with different mouths and you get a host of different expressions so for example you know i've got here happy for the lower eyelid but then if someone's scared that would also use that eyelid um or upset you would also use that eyelid um so yeah you can get you know by mixing and matching different mouths different eyebrows different eyelids um you can get a whole host of different expressions right anyway i think i've gone on about this long enough so once i've got all my animations made in a um, Adobe animate i need to get them into the master file and the master file is either a photoshop file or an illustrator file now if you're doing it as a vector and you want it to be in an illustrator file the way of setting that up is done in a different way um, it's done in quite a very different way actually and i'm not going to go into that into this video because actually until very recently i've always just stuck to using photoshop as the master file because i always found it an easier setup really as you'll see in a second um but i have started using illustrator because some of my puppets have lots and lots and lots and lots of triggers and the more triggers you make in photoshop obviously they're all raster layers the fall can get bigger and bigger and bigger and i've had some puppets where the falls have gone over a gigabyte and you know that has a detrimental effect to the character animator file because you can start lagging it um whereas if you make it in illustrator it's um you know it's all vector and the files aren't as big however like i say vector um with illustrator when you've got animated um sequences it can get a bit more complicated so i'm going to make a different video about that because i'm literally building an advanced puppet right now which is all done in illustrator and i'll use that puppet as a tutorial for how to build a advanced puppet using illustrator but for now i'm going to show you how i build an advanced puppet using adobe photoshop um and photoshop is perfectly fine like i say even though i find it can be too big for some of my puppets i'm talking about very 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 advanced puppets that uses a lot of animations most people out there are not going to get anywhere near the amount of layers that i use um so it's never going to be a problem um so once i've made an animated layer um such as let's go back to the mouth got me a um again shoot if you got a puppet running at 24 frames per second i normally like to only use about five frames to trigger a mouth expression um well if it's a vitamin i definitely only use up to five frames in fact it's only four frames because the first frame um will be the default frame so you're looking about four three frames because you want them to fire 
relatively quickly, especially when someone is talking fast. Um, however, if it's an expression, obviously you can have a few, you know, that can run up to 10 frames. If your puppet is running at more than 24 frames a second, I know a lot of people are liking the look of 60 frames per second. Obviously, it's going to require more frames in your sequence. But anyway, so this particular one is for a puppet shooting at 24 frames a second, and this mouth was done in five frames, as you can see there. So what I'll do is I'll um, go to export, export movie, um, find the file. So this is Radio X, Jenny Vaughan Show. I'll create a file called animations. Um, where did I do it for this particular character? There you go, Johnny animation. And then mouse, I'll create a folder for A. And then it's already done, but here I press A and then I'll go save. And that will export each of those. Oh, and make sure it's a ping sequence. I've done it before accidentally. We accidentally set it, um, left it on JPEG. I did, I rendered everything out and then I had to do it all again. Obviously, it needs to be a ping sequence. So it's just the art layer and everything else is transparent. And then basically you've got to do that for every, you go through all the different mouths and then eventually once you've got all the mouths done you oh, as you can as you can see i've been working with this puppet for a very long time so i've got lots and lots of different props that i've been adding to it but anyway let's say this was the character i wanted i'd select everything uh, make sure they're all symbols um, you don't want anything like this, otherwise they're going to go to the back of the queue. Um, so make sure they're all symbols. Copy them. Create a new layer. Then I'm going to go paste into place. And then I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to distribute to keyframes. And then you see everything has dropped into place. And then just like you did with the other animated sequences with the mouse and whatnot. Go to export movie again. Find your file, create a folder called layout, and then again save and it'll export it. <coughs> it'll export it all the different sequences like this. Right, the next stage is to bring it into Adobe Photoshop. Now, I am not going to show you how to rig up your puppet in Adobe Photoshop. Um, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how we put together a cartoon using Adobe Character Puppets and also give you a few tips and tricks along the way. Um, that's why I showed you what I do in Animate with how I set up the mouths and the eyes. Um, because that might be something that hasn't been shown before. Um, but in regards to setting up how to rig your character up in Adobe Photoshop, there are already lots of video tutorials out there, particularly if you check out um, OK Samurai, aka Dave Werner from the Adobe Character Animator team. He has made lots of extensive videos showing you exactly what you need to do. So there's no point really me going over um, things that have already been covered in other videos. What I will do in this one is just point out a few things that myself and my brother here at Digital Puppets does, um, you know, just some little tips and tricks um, that might be useful. And um, yeah, so basically I'm just going to show you one thing that we do in Photoshop and then I'm going to jump straight into how we animate one of our cartoons in Adobe Creator Animator. So, the way that I, as you saw with um, the animate um, section, you know, you can have, you can end up with hundreds and hundreds of um, ping sequences and loads of layers. And if you've got to bring, if you've got to, you know, go file, place in bed every single frame 
who are going to spend a long time just bringing the files into Adobe Photoshop. And there are quicker ways, very fast, much faster ways of doing that. So I'm going to show you what I'll do. Um, first of all, you're going to find your folder um, where you exported your layout to. And you're going to find the first frame. And you're going to open that up in Photoshop. And then you're going to go back to that folder again. And you're going to select all these other frames. Make sure you pick the first. And you're going to drag and drop them onto the artboard because they will fall into the correct position. You know, they're not going to randomly go all over the place. They're going to drop exactly where they need to. Um, you do have to press the return button for each of these frames. In this case, I think I just, I just selected 92. If anybody knows a quicker way of doing this, please do let me know in the comments below. This is the way that I did it to begin with, and I've never really looked. You know, it only takes a few seconds, that's it, done. So, you know, it doesn't take a long time. You can have hundreds and hundreds of layers, and it's just a few, you know, less than a minute, tapping away, and it's done. There probably is a quicker way. I've not looked into it. This works. That's it. If you do know a quicker way, do let me know because I will be happy to use it. Um, then what I do, first of all, I select the body. Oh, no, make sure you get rid of that initial first frame. Um, select the body. Group. Oh, make sure you got all the layers for the body there. Um, Control G. On Windows, I'm not sure what it is on a Mac. Control G, group it. Then the rest of the layers you know are going to be your head. So select them, group. Um, this particular head is my frontal pose. So I'm going to group this group again. The top group is going to be called head. The next group is going to be called frontal. Um, that group is going to be an independent layer when you get into character animator. I'm going to put a little plus here. So that when it goes into character animator, it automatically becomes an independent layer. Um, but you can just do that in character animator. Then I'm going to select all these folders. And last time, press Control G, um, group that. And that is the parent file. And as I said, do check out. There's multitudes of other videos on YouTube um, that explain how you, you know, set up all these layers you know group them up into eyes mouth nose um i do like to oh and make sure you rasterize all these i do like to put my ears on a separate layer and i'll explain why because i like to um you know with the parallax effect i like to you know have the ears and all the different elements of the head and this hair as well um, will also be masked out and move around and you'll see why in a second so um, yeah ears separately um, hair layers separately and then as I said check out them other videos and see how all this is set up and then once you finish setting up your puppet in Photoshop save it as a Photoshop file obviously and then we're going to bring that file into Adobe Creator Animator. Um, we're going to move over into that software now. And I'm going to show you how we've got this character um, set up over there. And then finally, I'm going to show you how we use the characters to animate the show. And then into the final software, which is Premiere, where we put it all together. So let's jump over to the other software right now. Right, now we're in Adobe Creator Animator. Um, as I said before, I'm not going to do a deep dive into how to rig your character because there are lots and lots of videos um, already about that. What I am going to do is I'm going to show you some of the things we do here at Digital Puppets, some of the ways we rig our puppets up a little bit differently, and you might find those um, tips useful and you might decide to use them in your own puppet build. Um, as you can see on the screen here, my character's um, I'm not wearing the same clothes as wearing a minute ago in Photoshop and that's because the Photoshop that we were just looking at 
was just me giving an example of how to bring your um, ping sequences into a file quickly. Now, obviously, we're on, this is episode 32 here. Um, I've picked up as an example. And so we've been working on it a long time. So you can see all different, over time, we've accumulated lots of new props and layers. Um, and each week, we like to change their clothing. Um, that can be their trousers, jeans, shorts, t-shirts, hats, and all that. So what I'll do each week when I'm starting a new episode, I'll click on the file, um, Johnny's character file here. I'll press the PS file to bring us to his um, file in Photoshop. And then I will go in. And you'll see here with um, the clothing, I've got the outline and the fill on separate layers. And the reason for that is that I can go to fill. I can go to um, press the FX um, layer style and then go to gradient and I can change the color. So, you know, in this case, let's say change it to red. Dark red main color brighter red press ok and then go to the again I've got the shoulders on a separate layer in the arm folder um, and then the outline on a separate one so I can go to that color overlay match the color next to it there ok right click uh, copy layer style click on the other arm right click paste layer style and then I can change the logo design for something else um, I don't know what <laughs> whatever you want um, you know let's just um, pick a symbol so as an example you know a star Then press save, go back over into character animator and it will automatically update. And there you go. Um, so that's what I do each week. That's a little tip <laughs> I didn't go into before. I suppose I could have done um, had I shown you our setup um, in Photoshop. So just to reiterate, reiterate, yeah, that's pronunciation. Um, yeah, when I create my clothing in um, for my puppets, um, oftentimes I will give them a t-shirt and I'll make sure the outlines and the fills are on separate layers so that as you just saw you can go in and not only can you change the color but you could also add patterns by masking in um, you know like if I wanted it to be a check shirt layer I could go into Google look for a check or make um, a check shirt pattern bring that um, layer into Photoshop and then when I'm in Photoshop I literally would um, have the layer there and I would create a clipping ma um, mask um, and then yeah so you know like I say it's always nice if, especially if you're doing a weekly show um, oftentimes you'll see a show and the characters look exactly the same in every single episode where with um, character animator it is very easy to change the clothing um, so if you can why not Okay, so let's have a look at the rig. Right, let's go into rig mode. Right, so, um, obviously one of the main things I've been talking about is how we um, create the animated eyes and mouths and stuff like that. So once you've made them, how do you set them up? So let's have a look. First of all, Let's get his. Oh, I'm looking at the body here, so that's my phone. Go to front door, and as an example, we could all work the same way. Let's go for mouths. So, look for mouth. Um, in this instance, you will see the reason for this here is I've actually got a swap set set up. So, we got the default, and we got the sad. Um, mouse there. So if I was coming in, um, each of my um, vismins are in a folder. In fact, I will go back into Photoshop to demonstrate this. 
take that off take that off so we can actually see what's going on let's just turn that off right so in my mouth set um where normally um people will just have a single file which is the um a mouth and then the e mouth and the d mouth um if it's going to be if you're going to have an animated mouth layer you need to create a folder for each of them where you put your ping sequence into it so here we got layer two three four five again i haven't got layer one because that is just the default one and i do the same for each of those and then when we go into adobe Creator animator you will see that they're automatically um, tagged as you know the vismin so the a e and whatnot then what you want to do is um the pop if you don't do anything when you go into character animator you're going to see all the frames at the same time obviously that is no good what you want it to do is fire the animation as it's speaking and the way to do that is quite simple it's uh on the right side of the screen here you go to behaviors and then you add a cycle layer and then on my one because it's going two three four five because of the way i've done the drag and drop into photoshop and that's the order that it's dropped in i select bottom uh, to top but if for uh, whatever way you've done it it's your one was two three four five then you'll go top to bottom and then some other important things you want it to hold on the last frame otherwise it's just going to vanish and then i always have it stop immediately on trigger end now the reason for this is that when you're talking if you're talking really fast and it's going e d f a e d f you know like all that you don't want each thing to be on let cycle layer finish because it will just be like a that'll finish e that'll finish but by the time each of those are finishing you're already right down the road saying all the other you know um vitamin so you want it to stop immediately and this goes right back to what i was saying when i was building the mouths in adobe animate that's why i have the mouths jump straight into a recognizable mouth shape and then a bit more um action afterwards so that if it literally only fires one frame then you're going to be able to recognize it as the lip sync shape it's supposed to be so have it on stop immediately don't have forward and reverse because obviously you don't want it to reverse out of the shape once you set it um but if you are later on creating a um an expressive an expression mouth that you have as a trigger you do have that as a forward and reverse because obviously you will be pressing a small and then when you take your finger off it will reserve, um, reverse back into the neutral default mouth shape um, and obviously you are pressing that button so you've got control over how long that lasts um, and then yeah it's the same for the exact same way for your eyelids so you know um, and I've got animated eyebrows as well for this one. So if we go into lids, we've got all the animated different eyelids I got here, and they're set up in the exact same way as the mouth is. They've got a cycle layer, and they do have reverse on them because, unlike um, the lip sync, again, these are only going to be triggered when you are triggering them because these are going to be expressions um in regards to some ways i have things set up differently as i said before i like to have the ears and other elements like the hair um as independent layers so that they will move um in a more kind of 2.5d manner and the way that i have this work is I add the behavior of um, I've renamed it here as you can do but that is actually a face 
behavior. And I've renamed that. Um, as you can see, you can rename your behavior just so I can keep track of what's what. And then I set once you have it as face, make sure here you got that clicked as head. Make sure it's independent, otherwise, it's going to drag um, the other layers around, which you don't want it to do. Um, now, with the ears, when you turn your head one way, because of the back of your head is moving kind of in the opposite direction so if your face is going left your ears are kind of moving to the side in fact it's probably i'll go into the animation i'll show you in a second so i've got it at head strain as minus so let's go into record make this smaller johnny and i'm going to make sure at the moment i've got all the um behavior is turned off so let's just turn on um body and in here you can see the ears and the hair and the face now if you look at the ears there i've got them on reverse so as my face is because if for example here i've got the cater turning his head to the right so it's I'm moving my head in this direction but you don't want the ears to be moving in that direction as well because they should be moving you know away in the opposite direction so I've got a very slight um, you know minus 5% whoop, hang on. you can see it here as well the settings so yeah I've got it if it's too much obviously that's no good so I've just got it subtly on 5% and I generally do the same thing for the hair in the background. Again every character is different it's a case of just playing around with the settings and again um, this isn't completely new information Dave when he set up his um, in his video where he talks about parallaxing he does talk about doing this precise thing so go and check that video out for a bit more information on that setup but um, mainly what I just wanted to show you right now was how we take the animated elements such as the eyes and the mouth and how we set them up and then if I just whoop, bring this over here these are different expressions have trigger expression turned on so Oop. I hate that <laughs> I never used that one the mouth is all wrong um I should have spotted that when I was putting it together, but I didn't. <laughs> so it's in there. I really need to be deleted. But anyway, so and the way this works, I should show you that as well. So go back into rig. So you've got your cycle layer set up. You've got so for example, let's say you've made um, animated layers for the eyebrows, the eyelids and the mouth or for smiling. So you've got the eyelids rising, you've got the eyebrows rising, you've got the mouth animating into a smile. What do you do then? Well what you do then is that you create a trigger. Um, or in fact you could in this instance you'll see over here I've got a swap set and in that swap set I've got lots of triggers and so let's find smile And as you can see down here, these are all the different groups. So what you do, if I was to, if I was making this from scratch, I would um, find all my layers, um, my groups. So eyebrows, left, right. We've got. Um, I might pick the happy one. So. So, well, if it's smiling, his eyebrows are going to be raised. So, 
I pick the rise and then eyelids I'm gonna look for happy other eyelid happy go down to mouth a smiley mouth and then when I've got all them I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag and drop them into the trigger there and I'm going to undo that because I've already done it once. <laughs> but that's all you do. You drag them in. And then um, in your control folder, you simply drag that over to here. And then you've got your trigger button. Um, I created another video a while ago if you look into our library on how to make um, thumbnails so that you can keep track because the one thing Adobe Creator Animate doesn't have at the moment is that you can't simply right click and upload a thumbnail. Um, basically what it does, it picks one of the layers, in this instance it picked the mouth layer and it used that as the illustrated thumbnail um, but if you've got a bunch of triggers where you might be using the same small mouth but different eyelids to create different type of expressions then it can get confusing so if you check out um, our digital puppets library on you youtube you will see a video where i explain how you can make thumbnails right i'm gonna once again undo that because i've already got the smile trigger in there i don't need it in there again right so i've shown you how to set up an animated expression I've shown you how to um, put in it the trigger so those are a few little tips and tricks looks into how we set up our puppets with animated features right so let's say you have now got your puppet and he's ready to go um, again if there's any features on this puppet that you like the look of and that I've not mentioned then you would like to know more about it put a comment below and I'll be happy to do a more specific video um, video talking about you know the development production of that particular part of it but anyway so now you've got your working puppet and you're ready to get animating so how do we make a show each week let's have a look go back into record mode and um, the reason his arm is disappeared is because I've got triggered turned on and when triggered is turned on you can't see any of the trigger actions down here I'll turn that off it'll show you how it would look right this is one we made earlier this is an episode um, of the kickabout and what happens is as I said every Friday we get the audio sent over and we've got the audio for each character um, individually so and that's important because obviously what we do first is that we select the audio we select the puppet we go to timeline and we compute take form scene audio so that it automatically lip syncs um, if we go to preferences and go to lip sync I like to add a few more vitamins um, because obviously when someone talks they're generally you know following a lot of mouth shapes and then I generally have my muting around minus 40 the better the quality of the audio um, the you know the less I have this the muting on it um, because obviously the more it can pick up the more tighter the lip syncing can be but if your audio um, has some background noise or any you know it isn't as high quality you're going to want to mess around with this um, feature here and that feature there. You know, everyone's setup is a little bit different. So my setup isn't necessarily going to be how you set yours up. But this is where you can come in and play around with it to try and perfect that lip syncing. However, um, generally every week, um, well, yes, every week, we still do need to go in and, you know, clean up the lip syncing. Um, you know because sometimes it's not perfect and we just need to you know fix some bits and bobs so once you've um, done the automatic lip sync 
you will see the vision means pop up here and you can have a listen let's um enlarge this so we can see better oh another tip for you um before we get into that is that these characters i do believe are 3000 by 3000 pixels which is pretty big if you think about it you know um high definition you know still for a lot of people is 1080 i know obviously it's more like over 3000 for 4k um but these puppets the videos are going out at 1080 however um even though the videos are going out at 1080 we can't render these puppets out at 1080 because when we get later on we do want close-ups so we need the characters to be larger so that when we do the close-up you know the quality remains oops just had to answer the door there for the typical amazon delivery which seems to come daily these days right where was i yeah sizing so as i was saying our puppets are size um pretty large um but if a puppet is very large and it's got lots of layers and this goes back to what i said at the start it can cause a lag but there are ways around it now for example um, both of these puppets are big both of these puppets have got lots of um, expressions and additional triggers so what i would first do is i would um turn off the one character and then if we click on the scene so here is episode 32 you can see that the size of this is presently um 3840 picks by two and a half thousand picks um what you can do is i've got the dogs in the office as well <laughs> and a lot to buy at the postman as he turns up one minute oh, back again um where was i yeah so this scene is um you know almost four thousand by two and a half thousand picks it's very big and depending on the power of your computer it might get really laggy um my particular system runs it fine sometimes though even on mine it can get a bit slow so what i do is i um i resize it i drop it down to you know as little as um 12 80 by 720 then i would resize the puppet down I'll do all my animation and then before I render it out I would resize it back up to the full size and all that means is that when you are animating it that lag isn't there it you know it, it performs a lot better so that is an important tip um, that I would recommend put that back to normal though anyway so before i um went off script onto that additional little uh, tip we were talking about lip syncing so let's play it for a second yeah. starting as always with the good the bad the ugly gav for me the good this week go on a complete set of peace stop now something you might notice here so obviously you probably already know you can go through you can right click and you can if you think the automatic lip syncing is putting um, a sound and sometimes it can be wrong because obviously um, people all around the world use Adobe Character Animator and lots of different accents um, and so sometimes the software might mistake one sound for another sound. I myself, you might, um, if you're from the UK, you might recognise I've got a Birmingham accent. Um, I've actually not lived in Birmingham for quite a while now. In fact, over 20 years I've been living in Torquay, which is in um, the southwest of the UK. So my accent might not be as broad as it once was but it's still there and sometimes um the automatic lip sync picks the wrong vitamins so you just go through and you swap it out for what it is um however as i said earlier when you're doing the lip sync you've got it um, i've got mine to cut off as soon as it finishes so if we go back a bit whoop, so you see here it goes s and then as soon as this finishes, it cuts back to that. And, you know, it'll look fine, but it can look a bit choppy. I like um, 
you want it to kind of animate in and then animate out Ooh, bit of lag um, so a complete set of pieces and the way that you do this is that you turn each of your mouth shapes into an um an additional trigger so if we um get up my control panel and go down you will see I've turned not only have I got um on my mouth shapes normally I've double um I've duplicated them and I've made a trigger version of them turn triggers on here so here we go like eight animates into it and then when you release it animates back to default e in out in out and that gives you a much more fluid looking thing obviously when you're talking really fast you don't need that but sometimes what i do like to do just to create a more clean fluid advanced whoop, um looking animation is that on the end of a sentence so had that that would have been an e i'll delete the e and then i'll drop in the Vizimin version and on that um sorry i will drop in the trigger version of the Vizimin. um and if we just go into vig for a second i'll just show you how i've got that set up so go to mouths and you see here you got a e d or the usual suspects and the only difference to like so a here is set up to stop immediately and so there's no return on that but my trigger a is set up to let cycle finish and more importantly forward and reverse so that when you release when it stops playing it reverses back to frame one and then it'll hold on that no, sorry, it'll hold on um, the last frame and then when you release, it'll reverse out and then stop. Go back into record mode. And then what I like to do here generally is um, I'll record. Here's another tip for you coming up. And I'll do this for the mouths, the eyes, eyelids, expressions, all your swap sets. I will go into record. And... So find the A, there it is. Record. Yeah. Starting as always with the good, the bad, the ugly. Gav, for me, shape. the good this week. Go on. Press stop. Go back into timeline. And then you see here this bar. And I've already got one down here. But when you um, record your mouth shape, this bar is going to come up for the whole time that you're recording. And I'm just going to delete this because I've already got one. But I'm just showing you how I'll get it there. Wait for the little wheel to disappear. Loading wheel. And anyway, then I make sure that bar is stressed out for the whole width of my sequence. And why do I do that? And I make sure I do that. So when I press record, I wouldn't have just... At the start of a project, they wouldn't just press record for the mouth. I would have pressed record. I would have pressed make sure um, I pressed a mouth. I would have pressed an eyelid. I would have pressed um, an eyebrow. I would have pressed an expression. Basically, everything that I've got as a swap set. Because once you've got these bars in place, so let's say this S here, I wanted to make that um, into one of my trigger ones. I would delete that S. And then what I'll do is uh, find mouth and then I'm going to right click and everything from that swap set is going to be listed here. So you just go into mouth and then 
um, what was it S so I'll press S and there you go and then you stretch it out for however long you want it to hold and so now this um, sentence talks away but that last rhyme is going to be the more fluid in and out Press play. Gav, for me, the good this week. Go on. A complete set of pieces. And like I said, it's just one of them little flourishes that we add just to, you know, just to make it look a bit more fluid looking. Now, um, and obviously, once you've got all your lip sync set up, what you need to do next is have your character emoting. Um, we've got all our triggers um, set up for the different expressions. And not only do I like to have full face expression, but I also like to have control over just, you know, the eyebrows, the eyelids. So, you know, you might be talking away, but be looking pretty annoyed. So as you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of um, triggers set up for just the eyebrows and the lids alone. If I right click, you can see, you know, I've got narrow, delight, puzzled, furious, mean, happy, you know, all the different emotions you might have when you're talking. So... At the beginning of the sentence here, you know, starting off the show, he's looking happy. And as you can see, in fact, I'm going to just turn triggers off here because so you can see what's going on. So, yeah, start this. Um, he's happy. He's introducing the show. I want him to look happy. So I've got his eyelids raised up a bit. I've got his um, eyebrows raised up a bit. Um, all of those are triggers in my eyes and lids um, swap set. And so it's a case of, you know, as we go along, I've got my, that's my default, um, so that does nothing. So let's say he's saying something here which he's angry about. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard to slice. And let's say for this particular sentence here, is annoyed. I'm going to right click, I'm going to pick my angry um, trigger and the camp in the linkage village of but if I didn't want his eyelids to go and I just wanted his eyebrows going instead then I'd just go down to uh, my swap set which is just eyebrows and press arch drag that out to the length I want it to last And then there you go, raise his eyebrows a little bit to um, accent something he's saying. Mm. And you can do this with other things. Um, as you can see, he's wearing a helmet there, and that is also a swap set I've got for hats. Um, you can see I've got other hats made previously, so I can change that to a golfing visor, sun hat. Um, wizard hat you know whatever you um, whatever you've made and put into that layer <laughs> um, so yeah for the animation part of it I'm literally listening to what he's saying and I'm going along and as I'm going along I'm adding in all the different expressions literally just going along right clicking and dropping in where they're needed <laughs> a bit of a weird match there love eyes and eyebrows but you know mix and match you get lots of different expressions out of things but once it's all set up like this as you can see it's just kind of equivalent to drag and drop you can animate a show really quickly um and then once i've got all the expressions in place um i listen to the audio and I will animate the body swipe. So that would be, again, this mocap body is actually a face behavior. I've just renamed it so I know which one it is. And then the same for my hair, ears, and my face. Um, we have the face set up separately 
again we've made a video explaining why we do that the reason we do it is that you get more um, tilt on the head and it doesn't drag the body with it so yeah I'd um, play the audio I'd press record Lincoln to village of Torxy yeah. is just, expected you know, to fetch about £1,000 at auction. Uh, this is an ask I'm way. reading from the Times. Okay. Mick Bond, 73, a metal detectorist, did the, not at um, first realise. I'm going to say, so really shame on Mick for this. Are you ready? Go on. Doing He's 73. Language, but, he didn't you know, at first realise the 37 objects were from a game called in fact, For this particular episode, we do have a cutaway later on. Just zoom out. Oh. This is another scene where they're in a, a record shop. Um, obviously, you're not seeing any of the background at the moment because we do that later on, which I'll show you in a minute. fact i think i might have animated i was going to show you where i um there's a scene where he's in the jungle and he's looking afraid but i animated that as a separate scene and then i edited that in later on so we don't need to look at that at the moment um what else did i want to show you so i've shown you clothing i've shown you how to add in props i've shown you how um we try to get more fluid lip syncing um So, once we've got all that made, the next thing we then do, oh, and one last thing I'll uh, show is um, if we get his co-host back up. Now, the, diff the one difference between these two characters is that, as you saw earlier, Johnny's mouth includes his jaw. Um, however, we actually changed the way we do things now. Um, he was one of the last puppets we set up like that because Gavin's puppet introduced a way of how we now rig out puppets, and that is that we have the mouths on their own completely separate, and then the jaw um, is using the um, jaw behavior. So whoop, let's um zoom in here. So yeah. With um Gavin's character, let's have a look at him in rig mode. I'll get that mask off him so you can actually see his mouth. Um, and you'll see here when I click on mouth, the mouths don't, unlike the Johnny character, um, it's not the full jaw. We've just got the mouths on their own and then the jaw is set up separately and as it's um, tagged as a jaw. Now, the one thing you do have to do is... Um, turn down the sensitivity because if you don't i'll demonstrate why i think when it's automatically set at 100 percent and 100 percent the jaw is going to be going too much so you can adjust that um in lip sync you go to lip sync um jaw movement i've got it set at 15 percent if you went for the default 100 percent this is what it's going to look like i'm going to press play the table That's right yeah something Some, awful uh, something yeah, yeah. awful that it's too much so you just want it sort of you want it anywhere between five and twenty percent we've got this particular character settled on fifteen percent so we're using the jaw behavior on the table That's right yeah something Some, awful, uh, something yeah, yeah. awful that Adobe probably and the behavior, probably you know, the person who's just been deprived of them is probably watching in and, and the reason that is good is that um you know, if you're making another character, you might want to use that mouth set for a different character. And then you don't want to have to render all the falls out again because you want to take the jaw out. You can literally take that mouth set 
um, and drag and drop it into a different character and then just, you know, again, set that character's dual up um, in the same way. So that is generally... And also when you're doing... Um, another reason that we do that is that I like to create um, a more advanced parallax. In fact, um, when I do head turns, often I use... I don't use the full head turn. I'll use um, replays to do a more fluid thing and I'll add draggers and transform on the mouth, the nose, the eyes, and I'll set up um, a replay where all the features will turn. Now, if you want to see more how I do that, go into our library and check out our Magic Rabbit, um, Magic Rabbit character, and you'll see that I've got some um, up, down, left, right head turns. Um, but that's for another video. But for that reason, I like to keep all the facial ele elements, mouth, nose, eyes, all independent or separate so that if I want to later you know have them moving for a more 3d head turn I can do that um, if the mouth is attached to the jaw like the Johnny character is you can't do that um, so that's just future proofing I think the expression is just so later on if you're going to do something more advanced you can do it and you don't have to go back and redo it all again so that's that I'm just having a quick look at my notes, so I'm just going to pause for a moment. Right, so, um, again, if there's anything, you know, obviously making a character, animating a show, rigging everything, you're talking lot hours of, you know, work and lots of, you know, in integral, <laughs> I'm rubbish saying after these words, you know, lots of different parts and whatnot. So, obviously, this is only a an overview walkthrough of our process. Um, I'm sure there's lots of things I'm missing out and there's things that you might want me to go into more detail about. Um, oftentimes, most of our videos are only short, little, quick, deep dives into you know how we do something. So if there's anything here that you feel like we've glossed over and you would like us to go into more detail about, um, again, just drop a comment below and I'm happy to do that for you. Um, but anyway, so, once we've got the lip sync done, we've got all the expressions done, um, and we're happy with how it's looking, um, you have to remember to, um, if you've shrunk your artboard, you know, your scene down to a smaller size to stop the lagging issue. Um, so, for example, often I'll drop it down to 720. Um, just remember, pop it back up to full size, and then, um, you've got two ways of rendering this. You can either pin sequence it. So, in fact, sorry, there's three ways. You can either do it as a dynamic link, um, which I've done a few times, and when it works, it is brilliant. But oftentimes, you can have lagging issues. Again, in fact, I mean, I did that. I had those issues on my old setup. So, you know, um, it could be perfectly fine. Um, but when we're making these videos, we have a real tight deadline. As I said, we get the audio on a Friday, we animate on a Saturday, and we need to deliver by the Saturday evening. So I don't do the dy um, dynamic link because I have had issues um, previously, and I don't have time to have those issues. And for that reason, I also don't do the ping sequence and the wave file. Now, my partner, Anthony, when he does it, he always does it in the ping sequence. However, I've had a few um, experiences where one or two layers have become corrupted. Um, and then I've had a bunch of problems later on. So Anthony hasn't. That's just my personal experience. Again, it could be the way things set up on my computer. But my preference is to export as an alpha. Um, so basically... That exports it as a video file, um, but the background is transparent, so it's just the characters. Um, it's almost like a, a video version of a ping file, um, but it's animated. So when we bring that into Adobe Premiere, I can just drop that in, and then I can add in the background behind it and whatnot. So yeah, I'll, um, exp I'll render it out in... Um, so if we go to that, obviously... Thingy will come up then. <laughs> What's it called? Um, 
So that was episode 32. I'll call it alpha. And then media encoder will come up. And it's straightforward, but in case you've not used it, I'll show you how it does. It'll pop up here, click on it, press play, and it will render it out. And that will render to where you've just saved it to. Right, so then once that is done, we go into Premiere. Oh, <laughs> one thing I did forget. Um, obviously, I was showing you, um, it'll go back in character animator. <laughs> I'm going to cross the Premiere yet. Um, the one thing I did forget, obviously, I've shown you our way of, you know, quickly being able to drop in expressions and whatnot so that you can rapidly put together an animation. And bear in mind, these animations are anywhere between 8 and 15 minutes long. Um, and, you know, we've got scene changes and whatnot. And, you know, if you go back a few years to when everything was traditionally hand done, um, a 15 minute animation could take, you know, quite a bit of time and a few different animators where all of this once your puppets are built, it's done by me or by the other guy, my brother Anthony. Um, and it's done in, a, you know, a few hours. I mean, it still takes a couple of hours throughout the day because, you know, you've got 15 minutes and you've got tons of stuff to do. But um, compared to how long an animation used to take, um, it's done very quickly. And of course, as we already know, with digital puppets, you can do things in real time and perform live if you wanted to. Anyway, as I showed you, um not too long ago using swap sets and the way that i bring everything into the timeline um we can kind of drag and drop in expressions and movements and that quickly the one thing i didn't show you um which is also a way that we speed things up is that we do the same thing as you can see here on the right hand side of the screen and um, we create a bunch of replays for the arms so let's have a look at a couple of them um oh uh, I haven't got triggers um, turned on, so let's do that. Turn on triggers, and what puppet have I got in turned on here? Oh. Again, I've got his. Um, the reason his body's disappearing here is actually because I've got his default body is one costume, and then I've created like his T-shirt as an additional trigger, and um, because of it's all a bit messy. Because obviously we're on episode 32. Now had this been a puppet for a customer. Everything is very you know laid out properly. But because it's me doing it. And I know how everything is. By the time we've gotten to week 32. It's looking a bit like this. But trust me it's not broken. It's fine. Anyway. Um, hang on. Give me a second and I'll sort that out. Okay. I've just been back over into Photoshop. And switched on his default body. Which um, the reason it was offered. We've not actually used this default body. In a very long time now so we perm permanently got on the um the clothing um trigger which each week we just change for you know different clothes but anyway get back to the what i was talking about is yeah um shortcuts um obviously time is of the essence each week you know we have a short um we have a tight deadline and so we need to um, automate things as much as possible which character animator allows you to do um, in the past when character animator first come out it didn't have the replay option and so every time we wanted a different arm movement we had to animate those arm movements um, yes you had the draggers but if you use the draggers you had to go through and do each one um, over and over and over again um, or, you know, we animated them and we dropped them into the trigger. Um, but now you've got um, replay. So you can literally record an action once, um, save it as a replay. And then just like with the expressions, you can just go along and put them in as much as you want. So here I've recorded a bunch of replays. Um, there's some drinking. Now you're thinking, why is his hand floated off? The reason for that is actually um, each week we add different props. So, for example, if he's holding an umbrella in some episodes or he's holding a golf club and stuff like that, when you drag and drop them into the folder, it does tend to 
make some of the other hands do this weird thing where they're gone out of place. So you do have to go back into rig mode and drag them back into place. It's not a problem. Um, but anyway, so literally, you just go along, press record, and then press play, um, and, you know, put in your pre-made arm animations. And if you want to be even quicker than that, for example, if we, um, this particular character, um, towards the end, he drinks his tea quite often, um, as you can see here. And if um, I don't want to have to animate that separately every time, I will literally just go down, find all the layers involved, look for a gap when I know he's not talking, and then I copy those and literally just press paste and you know drop them in wherever I want them to. And then I also do that like in the middle section when um he's talking i like to have him gesturing you know you know as you can see there he's moving his arm out holding the thing and in other shots um as you can see the johnny character you know he's moving his hand over gesturing with the hand holding the mic and um i'll just copy that accent action and i'll just you know drop them in wherever relevant so that's something i missed out before like with the expressions and whatnot, it's just another little tip to speed up your process, especially if you're doing an animated show that you're doing on a weekly basis and you've got a high turnover and you've got a short deadline and you want to keep that um, process nice and quick. It's just another feather in the cap to, you know, speed up that process. Anyway, let's get back over um, into the final um, software that I'll be using and that is Adobe Premiere. Obviously other people might use other um, video editing software to put everything together. And you can do this in, um, obviously Adobe Character Animator does have the camera um, behavior, which is brilliant. So, you know, you can drop in your background here and you can do your close-ups and whatnot. The reason that I use Premiere, especially for this particular show, in the beginning, um, we had video, um, sections going up. So you'll see in a minute in a scene, I've got like TVs in the background and we used to have videos playing. And then we also had um, scene transactions. So like a page would um, turn and it would go into the other scene or it would do like a Star Wars style swipe, which um, we don't get to do in character animator. But if you've got one scene and you just want the camera to zoom in on one character or cut to the other character, then you can completely do it all in Adobe Character Animator. If you want to do something a bit more advanced, then I use Adobe Premiere, or you might choose to use Adobe After Effects. You can use either of those depending on your preferences. Um, but we're going to go into Premiere. So let's skip across to there now. All right, so here we are in the last leg of the production, which is Adobe Premiere. Um, right, okay. So where should we get started? Well, well first of all, um, let's start at the beginning. But first of all, actually, when this show started back in January, the setup was actually different. As you might be aware, we had a pandemic everywhere, all around the world. And um, so when the show first started, we had the two presenters in the uh, studio together. Um, but obviously to reflect the way the world is now, we decide we change things up because this show is separated into, it's called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. And for each scene, we put them in a different location. It used to be for The Good, they was in the studio. For The Bad, because it's a sports show, they would be in a football stadium. And for The Ugly, originally they would be in a pub discussing you know, like um, people often do, sports fans, they'll sit in a bar and they'll just, you know, watch a game, discuss the game and, um, you know, watch it on the TV and whatnot. And each week we like to, the beginning is always the same. We always keep them in the studio, but the other two scenes, we try and put them in different locations and whatnot. Anyway, because COVID hit and everyone, you know, had to self-isolate and keep two metres apart and all this, that and the other, 
what we decided to do, we put the one character, we kept him in the studio, and then the other character, we put him outside the studio, gave him a microphone, and then the view was, it's the, the Johnny character, was um, Johnny Vaughan character, um, presenter, cartoon version of him, was in his studio, talking to his mate on his laptop, and then you had the split screen. Uh, just to give you a bit more of an insight um, about our scenery, um, basically, we'll make the scene first, um, and then we'll break it up into two layers. So this is a frontal scene, which you um, can see. Is, well, you can't see it on this particular on this particular one. The frontal scene is actually this um, monitor screen and this wall, which is placed in front of the puppets. Then we place our puppet files and then the background. Um, if you were doing this all in Adobe Character Animator, um, like we have done another project, you could actually um, turn these scenery into triggers. You could, um, you know, you could make that flash on and off. You could make the TV graphic change. Now, this is the, the limitation with Character Animator is that if I wanted the TV scene to change, I could um, change the graphic. Um, and I could even make some sort of trigger so there's some kind of blend in and out. Um, but then that's just adding more layers and whatnot. So that's why in the end we decided to um, do the last composition in Premiere so that, you know, we can have transitions and whatnot. However, um, as time's gone on, we've actually moved away from the videos on the TV screen. We, you know, kept them more concise, um, you know, more keeping the pace a bit more, you know, quick. Um, when the past, in the earlier episodes, you can go back and look. They used to stop and look at pictures on the TV monitor and it could just slow it down a bit. It didn't really add that much to the show. So ultimately, that element was dropped. And anyone who makes a show, you're going to find it evolves over time. Um, but as an example, um, we can see when you get to so when we get to the end of the first segment the good and it goes into the next segment the ugly we've created an animated sequence so here's our swipe and if we go we can see the layer the reason it's sort of way up there is that in previous episodes we've had more layers but um so i've animated this sequence separately i've brought this into premiere i've dropped it in there i've gone to um video transitions and for this one I've created a I haven't created I've used a preset um zoom is it no iris that's the one um round and all you do is literally grab it and you drop it down and if you zoom in on my keyboard it is the um plus symbol at the top of the keyboard you can, you know, control how long it lasts. And even if you click on it, if you look to the left of the screen here, you can even um, choose, choose <laughs> where the circle begins. So at the minute, it's dead center. But if I wanted it to, let's say, for whatever reason, I wanted it to come out of a, a TV screen in the corner, you can move it up to there. And it's the same if you pick... You know, if you um, had um, slides, so if I wanted to push, so if I wanted that scene to push over, you can have it come in from the top. Side, you know, you get the idea. Um, most of these um, transitions here have got some sort of adjustments and, you know, so you've got some control. And I'm sure with, you know, and that's just the preset ones. I mean, with Premiere and After Effects, you can make your own or you can get in presets that other people have made and you can download them and drag them in and drag them onto the timeline. Premiere is, it's a very, it's, you know, like all programs, like Photoshop, you can, it can be simple, it can be complex, you know, it's just how much you want to learn the software. It can be um, easy enough if you want it to, um, but you can do a lot more advanced um stuff with it so anyway so as i did in um character animator and the last you saw was me exporting the files as alpha files 
And then all I'll do is I'll go to File, um, Import, find where I've done it. So Radio X, and it was um, Show 32, um, find the video file. Do, 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 do. There you go, Alpha. I've already got it in there, but if I wanted to, I put open, and then when I press open, it's going to show up in my um, project file here. If I um, right click, I can open it up in the source monitor. Um, and you know, for some reason, you might want to only pick this scene. So if I just want from this moment, I'll press mark in and mark out. And if I, if I want both the audio and the video, I can drag it into the shot like that. Or if you only want the visual, you can just drag in the visual only. Or if you only want the audio, you can drag in the audio only. Um, as I said, this um, particular um, sequence is um, size 1080. But as you know, the puppets were rendered out at 3K. So you click on your puppet, go to effects, um, and then scale them to whatever size. So you got scale, put it to the size you want, um, position, you can either, you know, move these, or you can click on motion and you can drag it around yourself. Now, as you can see here, he's supposed to be on one side of the screen um and then the other person on the other side so if he's got any arm movements his arm shouldn't be popping out over here so what you do then is that you select it oops, auto save um select it go to opacity um and these here circle square or free draw is your uh, masking so if i pick this one and then this little icon um pops up and then literally you just click there, there, you know. So in this instance, I don't want to be able to see any of these actions outside this area. So I'll click there, 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 and that'll create a mask layer. So if his arm in the animation goes over there, it's not going to show up. Um, obviously, I said before, I'll create the layers in Photoshop for the background scenery. So I've got my scene that goes over the front of them, I've got my scene that goes at the back of them. So anything that's in front is at the top. I've got my two characters and then at the back, I've got um, my exterior. Um, with this one, um, the background, as I said, the TV is um, actually, if I just click that, I've got all them turned off. So when I rendered um, when I rendered this out, it's um, the background is left like that. So in um, Premiere, I'm able to drop in behind it any other you know scenes or video footage, and then I can you know can change those as and when I want. Right. So basically, um, what I do first is as I, I get it all laid out. I get all my things put into place. Uh, this is another scene that changes. Um, like I say, we change. They are in different locations each week, but this re um, record shop is one that they're in every so often. And every time we use the record shop, we change all the posters and the records in the background. And then um, what we do, we save the. Um, oh no, this is a JPEG. So yeah. Basically, I'll go into Photoshop. I'll find the original Photoshop file. I'll save it as a new layer. And I'll bring it in there and I'll swap it out. And then once all of this is done, I go, and I'm happy with it, I'll go to Select All. And then I'll go right click and I nest it. And then when you nest it, you're going to get like this green. Um, folder there and that's everything put into um, one layer on the timeline and the reason I do this is that it's in this layer that I go through and I add all my camera cuts 
So. Game called. And generally, um, the way I determine what camera cuts, if one person's talking, um, I'll have a close up on them. And then when the other person reacts or is talking, I'll cut to a close up on those. If they're having a more of a back and forth, I'll have a, a medium shot so that you can see them both in frame. And then I've also got my wide shot. Oh. And so I don't have to, again, another shortcut. So I don't have to, for each, every time I cut it, you know, be repositioning everything. I create presets. So I got this frame and this is what I class as my median shot. So I've positioned, I've zoomed in, I've lined it all up right. Um, and again, just like moving around your characters, when you go on to your netted layer, you can just, you know, Zoom in, zoom out, move it around. And once you find what you're happy with, go to motion, right click, save preset, and I'll save that as medium um, studio shot. Press OK. And then when you look to the right hand side of the screen, go to presets, and there it is. Um, I'm going to delete that one because. I've already got it set up properly and I've got a folder here which I keep them all in and you can see I've got lots so um, record room close up of Gavin close up of um, Johnny Vaughan wide shot and then when you get to so this is a studio shot so go down studio shot and let's say if I wanted this to be a wide shot I grab this one and I literally just drop it right onto there and then there you go and then cut it when you want to do another camera cut and then grab your next shot so this is a studio mid shot drop it in mid shot then Johnny's talking so I want a close up of him so I'll go studio Johnny Vaughan 2 close up of him and it's that it's as simple as that the one thing you um again if I'm I could be doing something wrong for all I know, but my experience is that when you nest um, here, it doesn't necessarily nest all the um, audio files. So just make sure that if you're moving things around, that you've got it linked to the audio files down there. And the way you do that is you select that, select that, um, and then you just press link. Otherwise, you're going to find that you're moving these layers around and then half hour later you're going to realize that none of the audio layers have been moving with it and then you're going to have to redo it all again and then um once that is done you've pretty much got your episode um like i say you can also animate you know you might animate uh cutaway scenes so you know like family guy for example when peter griffin is talking about some imaginary scenario you'll often see him cut away and you'll see that sequence um, for this particular episode I did something like that so I'd, and the reason was um, like I said we have a tight deadline but for this episode it was going out a day later so I had an extra day to play around so I'd rendered and I've finished episode um, 32 but there was a point in it where he was talking about being in the jungle and I thought visually it sounded quite funny and I thought I could do a bit more with it so we could add that extra day I went back and I decided to animate um, some additional scenes, which ended up looking like this. Um, this character, I didn't, I mean, I cheated a bit. I didn't, I, um, the character doesn't have a walk cycle set up on him. And it, even though I had a bit more time, I didn't have that much more time. So I didn't want to have to go in and set up the leg rig and whatnot so I just cheated I basically I created a bunch of bushes to put in the way and then I just um, added a um, position so I got him moving from you know out of shot where is he out of shot into shot and in character animator I'd animated his character so I just got draggers on the arms you know I've got him you know moving around um, again with the face I added a dragger to the face so I got him looking around a little bit I've got his scared expression that little fella there 
was animated um, separately. No, sorry, all this was... Um, this scene was done in Adobe Animate. I rendered out the scene. No, I didn't. What am I saying? Hang on. Sorry, I had to pause and try and remember then. Um, I thought for a second I'd animated it in Adobe Animate and then rendered it out and then brought it into Premiere, but that isn't what I've done. I did this episode. I'm on, what, I'm on episode 35 now. Um, so, yeah, we did this episode about a month ago because it was one week that we hadn't done one. So it's been about a month. So, anyway, I can remember now. The way I did this was I brought the, I rendered the character. I'd um, also turn this character into a digital puppet is a very simple build obviously it's got no lip sync or anything like that i added dangles on the feathers i added the um head layer so that you know i could literally have his head bopping around and then i brought all the scenery into character animator um i bought the i animated it to the lip sync i rendered out that scene um that was done in character animator this is the scene I did in Animate. I created a new facial expression. And yeah, so that was just an added um, cutaway scene that I dropped in over the top of my already completed episode. Oh, and that's my... Who are you? Saying, who are you? Oh yeah, and in Animate, I'd... Um, created all these little speech bubbles coming out which I didn't add in in character animator I added in these speech bubbles later on and then I just dropped them into where I wanted them to be in the final composition and that is it I think um what we covered so in the beginning i showed you how i made the mouths the lip syncs how i generally put the character together gave a little tip on how to drag in the um lots and lots of files into photoshop i gave you a bit of an insight into how we then rig up them animated triggers in character animator uh, i showed you some of our shortcuts in character animator for drag and dropping in pre-made expressions and then i showed you in premiere how we put all the scenes together um as i said earlier and said many times throughout this video if there's anything you feel i've skipped over glossed over not gone into enough detail then by all means um please do leave a comment below and let me know what i'll do next is um i'll end this video um i'll tag I'll add the final, the finished video to the end. So you can see how after all that, it all fits together. And if you would like to see more episodes, then please do go to Facebook and look up Radio X and look up the Kickabout series. And you can, you know, depending on if you're watching this the week I released the video, to date, there'll be about 35 um, videos available on Radio X. Um, if you're watching this in the future, I know we we're working on this until at least January, maybe even longer. So plenty of videos to watch. Um, I hope you found this okay. Um, hang on, one second. I thought I'd enlarge the, the screen just for the outro bit. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting. I hope um, some of it was useful. Um, and that's all I've aimed to do, really. Just to give you a bit of an insight into how we work here. At cart um, how we work here at Digital Puppets. Um, obviously, this is one of our 2D driven projects. We do also work in 3D. My partner Anthony particularly does a lot of work um, with 3D puppetry. Um, he is doing more things with iClone at the moment. If that's something that you're interested in, he's starting to release a lot more insight videos and tutorials. Um, and again, um, if you're a cartoon 2D animator and you're interested in Adobe Cater Animator, which I personally think is a brilliant software, it's good if you're a novice. If It's good if you're 
just getting into animation is brilliant. But even if you want to build a lot more complex animations, um, I think the the software has massive potential, and it's still pretty much a very young um, new software. I mean, it only really start. I think it was released in 2017, so it was only a couple of years ago. And I know the team at Adobe Creative Animate, and they are always striving to update. And over the, the last few short years, I've seen a massive amount of development in the software. And I know there is a lot more coming from the team as well. Um, I'm not at liberty to say, um, but we are in um, we are involved um, with the bat team, and we know there's a lot of exciting things coming. Um, yeah, it's great. Like I say, you can we can really if this particular animation is a very much a podcast presenter based one, and it is great for what it is. Um, but if you wanted to do a TV style show where you had the characters fully, you know, turn all the way around, 360, complex um, facial movements. You can do that in Adobe Character Animator. Um, I am presently, if you check out the Magic Rabbit video that I released um, last week, um, in relation to this video, if you're watching this video two or three years down the line, it was two or three years ago I released it. But anyway, if you look at that video, that's got a bit more of a complex build. It's got um, Fluid 2.5, the head turns. I'm also working on a brand new puppet right now, which is going to be entirely built um, with Illustrator being a parent for. And I'm going to add a lot more um, body turns, triggers, and I'm also looking into trying to do some more master slider things. There's a lot of more advanced stuff um, we're looking into doing with Adobe Character Animator. So check out those tutorials. And also in the past, we've made a lot of tutorials um, for beginners as well, just giving tips on how to get a lot more out of your puppets and some more tips and tricks. And obviously, check out OK Samurai, aka Dave Werner, who has all uh, loads and loads of videos, not only about how to make um, your own puppet and how to rig your own puppets, he also makes lots of videos giving more tips um, on helping you make your own animations and he also does a lot of spotlight videos looking at other users from all around the world and how they're using adobe character animator so that is all um i'm going to now cut to the finished video of episode 32 of radio x the kickabout with johnny vaughan and gavin woods thanks for watching see you later bye bye Yeah. Starting, as always, with the good, the bad, the ugly. Gav, for me, the good this week. Go on. A complete set of pieces from a game known as Viking Chess. What? That was played by 9th century soldiers at a camp in the Lincolnshire village of Torxey. Yeah. Is expected to fetch about £1,000 at auction. Uh, this is an ask I'm reading from the Times. Okay. Mick Bott, 73, a metal detectorist, did not at first realise... I've got to say, shame on Mick for this. Are you ready? Go on. He's 73. He didn't at first realise the 37 objects were from a game called... <laughs> a popular... <laughs> yeah, yeah, spelt H-N-E-F-A-T-A-F-L. So, yeah. <laughs> a popular military strategy game. Shame on you, Mick, yeah, for not realising. <laughs> you should instantly identify a game of... <laughs> who, who wouldn't recognise that? Or Viking chess, as the but, headline calls no, it. Gav, yeah. my point is, is it, this word Viking, mm. it's extraordinary what it's done to the word chess as a compound. Wow. Like, yeah. chess doesn't get big crowds, right? No, no. Viking chess. I'm going. Now we're talking. Two guys with, like, horn helmets, one with a massive hammer. <laughs> and someone goes, check. <laughs> Bonk. Clang. Literally. Or they're just literally arriving on a longboat with their boards, and they set up. Yes. And there's loads of... Imagine the tension. You're thinking, what's going to happen if I lose? Well, and if you get taken off the board, you get yes. set on fire and set off into yeah, the ocean on a boat. Right, absolutely right. <laughs> they've literally got the whole village penned up in some sort of ritual building. Yes, under threat of pillaging. And they're going, please win, Seth! Please, please win! We've got children! Go on, Sven! <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, suddenly yeah. you got a different game. Now, yeah. Gav, I was thinking. Go on. 
Like, normally, see, first half I've read about chess in ages because it had the word Viking there. That word Viking, yeah. it livens up anything. For instance, they don't get many crowds. They don't get much crowd at table tennis. No. Viking table tennis. Oh, now we're talking. Two men playing with big hammers. <laughs> and you know it'd be... It'd be the testicles of something. That's that right. Yeah. Batting around a table. That's right, yeah. Something Somehow, awful. Something yeah, yeah. awful. That probably, and the, probably, the person who's just been deprived of them is probably watching in excruciating anger excru- from, a, from a nearby spit where it's being turned. Just terrifying. Afters. But again, Viking table tennis, you're turning up. Yeah. Well, Definitely. the Vikings, they won't like that one. <laughs> you can hear them arriving. But he doesn't like spin being used against him. No, he him. doesn't. He, he thinks it's someone being a bit clever. <laughs> Right, Gav, we've had the good, which yes. is Viking chess. Which is, um, uh, yeah. Which is good. What's bad is I see that F1 is taking, the, is Aston Martin's joining F1. For next season? Yes. 20, they've got Vettel as a driver, yes. I, I believe. Yes. Vettel. Now, firstly, is that Aston Martin's, they go wrong a lot. Traditionally, yes. Uh, secondly, they are in financial trouble. Yes, traditionally, yes. Traditionally, they are. Because <laughs> people buy an Aston Martin once. That's right. Yeah. They don't keep going. You don't, it's not like Ferraris. People keep getting new ones. They don't. No. They try an Aston Martin. They think, yeah, I've had an Aston Martin. Now I'll get a Ferrari. And back to the One Rari's. of those sports cars that actually goes up in value. Because <laughs> the last one that... The last Aston Martin that went up in value... Uh, the last Aston Martin that went up in value was driven by Sean Connery. That's right. And they're the ones that really used to break yes, down. Yeah, around to Dr. Nosegaff. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, God. No, they got like a Chrysler engine anyway. I know, yeah. They're like Chevrolet. They cost millions now. Yeah, yeah. they're millions, yeah. yeah. Just because of that. Yes, and just it, because I believe of that, me, it's yeah. not because of the engine. No. That's a bodywork thing. Yeah. So, Aston Martin are joining that. I just worry that other British marks... With might, similar, with similar, well, just might start coming out. We might start getting like you know, Vauxhall might get involved. <laughs> you know, like you know, I'm just worried. Healy, yeah, yeah. Austin, well, no, Triumph, Triumph, Austin. definitely, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, Rover, ja- Jaguar, yeah, Jaguar, and suddenly Grand Prix, you'll just get Ferraris. Actually, the you know, Ferraris break down a bit as well. They do, yeah. It's basically, you just get two Mercedes whizzing round. That's right. Well, every Grand Prix track will have to have a hard shoulder. It's well, all hard shoulder. The Jaguar team, though, still, I think they've got a fan belt that's gone there. The mechanics um, are scratching their chins, past smoking that Vox, pipes. That Vauxhall, which is overheated. <laughs> uh, and that'll have to go back to the garage. Apparently, the fan belt they swapped it with is, is not legal yes. in the rules. <laughs> yeah. Also, Gav, instead of, if they have lots of old British marks there, instead yeah. of having a pit lay, you just have arches. That's right. <laughs> like those garages. And go, the teams are being in, in, like in flat caps. Men like yeah. Phil Mitchell. That's right. <laughs> it's got to go back to the arches, I'm afraid. Manual jacks. None of this fancy modern jack systems well, as people. We've just got a message um, from the pit lane. They're saying Thursday earliest. <laughs> uh, they've got to get the parts from Swindon. <laughs> and uh, and there's part, a strike on at the moment. <laughs> they've got to get very worried about it. But apparently it's the same part you get in the Ford Zephyr. <laughs> 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 you can use it, it's not a it's problem. All right. It's no problem. That same part occurs in a Chrysler <laughs> Alpine. It's the same uh, switching gear across all the Leyland brands. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly seems to be the problem down there? Uh, well, basically, they reckon the, uh, the big end's gone and the, the carburetors. And, and the unions got involved. They won't be talking about tyres anymore. They really will be getting specific about engineering. They say the carburetors are knackered. <laughs> no, they said the whole thing's knackered. <laughs> Well, they've had to go into the pit. They've retired from the race. The team boss has said the engine's f***ing knackered. <laughs> like, yes. um, have, we got, um, have we got the ugly? Because I understand you've got, you've got a good idea for this and you want to lead off. I do, yes. Now, I read a story this week about a village in Ghana called Juaben. Right. Which has a thousand Aston Villa fans That's in it. weird. That's a weird pocket. It is weird, isn't it? But yes. I was thinking, we uh, all the top Premier League teams, I don't know if there's any... Burnley fans in China. Yeah. There's lots of Man U fans, there's lots of yeah, Liverpool there's fans. There's loads of Chelsea fans so, everywhere. Uh, so I was thinking... Mainly Chelsea fans I China. like the idea that this one town is now Villa. Yes. So a bit like, you know, you're supposed to sort of be from the, the city or the town yeah, where yeah, you yeah, support yeah. your club. So yeah. maybe Beijing should be just Man U. Yes. And then, no, and then, and then I, Shanghai should be Liverpool. No, I like And I, if you're from either city, you've got to stick to it. Yes, I like that, Gav. But yeah. I also like, and that's genius. Yeah. But I, I think your first example's funnier. How? Is it, well, it actually starts kicking off tribally round places. Well, that's what gets yeah. a football affiliation. Yes, and actually the next door, the next door fans, ironically, yeah. uh, Birmingham City have the Zulus, and that could be quite. Oh, feisty. I see that what you mean. Yes, yes, there, yes, you know? yes, yes. But I like the idea. You you, you, you run along, you, you run across a hidden tribe in the Amazon. Yeah, and you just hear. 
No. And you think, oh, Christ, alive. Oh, God. This is more dangerous than I thought. What is it? Papua New Guinea. They're asking if we're all Millwall. That's right, yeah. And they're saying, who are you? Again says, and again. He's just the, the tribal leader. He says, no one likes us. No one likes us. We don't care. Wow. Wow. I know. <laughs> It's just a bit more feisty that you suddenly it becomes a real problem. I think Club you're affiliation right. it's really you know, important, starts to yeah. really drag down the Amazon basin. Definitely. And very, very territorial from the different villages. It all kicked off because one of them got a radio That's right. with the World <laughs> Service on it. And after and the two or three generations. The BBC has been asked to try and jam the signals <laughs> because the results time can get a bit feisty. It can get ugly, John. Yes. <laughs> Certainly against their East London rivals. <laughs>